So hello folks, how are you doing? Today we have the Hyundai i30N here, specifically the fastback model and the model year 19. And I would like to answer the question if for all the current owners of an i30N it might even be worth an upgrade to go for this new version because we have new suspension, we have more grip at the front axle, of course we have a very cool design at the rear with this fastback view, but also um, we have of course a change sound due to the fact that there's an OPF in it but I would actually show you that the sound is not that worse compared to the previous model and that all the good pieces about let's say fine-tuning on suspension interior and all the other stuff is maybe even worse that upgrade for all the current owners so without further talking let's jump into the car pretty windy here and have some fun on the country roads. so we jumped into the car and are about to set off to the country road um, later on we'll also have a piece of autobahn that I would like to show you especially how the power delivery is like so let's see how it works here so of course as usual uh, we have the possibility to change the drive modes first of all on this side for the normal modes and here for more or less race mode or end mode I have now put it to the sportiest mode so that means traction control in sport and you see also in sport and the rest also in the sporty setting third gear 4000 very very decent pull and you can already hear it from the back initially we have those usual and well-known i30N banks which are coming and um, yes likely they are a bit quieter than in the previous version but still I mean it's almost the same compared to any other hot hatch out there with OPF model year 19 that is still a lot more but let's now look at suspension and steering here our short test track very interesting yeah there's a bump but it does not lose traction that much Oh, those banks are hugely loud in the back. Curve and corner coming. Yeah, very, very nice handling. Also, the brake is very good. Steering also nice. A very neutral handling. You can actually feel that even the rear axle is coming a bit. Not too much understeer, but still, I would say, a safe, let's say, um, setup that we have here. But of course, as you know, we will turn around and do the same run uphill again because that always shows a different perspective and a different, let's say, view on the chassis. 4000, power is instantly there. Better power out of the middle. Second gear, rev match works well. Very, very tight corner here and high speeds. Ah, shifts are working perfectly. Also from left to right here, you can really feel now from four to 5,000 RPM that there's a lot of power. Also on those bumps, the car feels very, very safe. It's a lot of fun, honestly, here. And you can already hear why I'm talking. It's not that much work, but it's a lot of speed that you gain into this car. Also from standstill. Perfectly, those gear shifts they work so much better than the previous version. I mean, I had problems, honestly, um, sometimes to get the perfect gear in the model year 17 or 18 i30N, um, and therefore, let's say, the fun was not there all the time, but here, I mean, I had so many shifts already, but they work perfectly. High-speed corner, at least we drive this with 100 kilometers, which is a lot for this corner and power from four to 5,000 RPMs. Again, 6,000 still pulling, shifting, yeah. But that's more or less country road speed and that's why we will now go on the Autobahn and see how it performs there. So we're now on the Autobahn and we'll try how the power delivery actually and the power curve looks like if you really can go through all the gears, not unlike on the country roads. Hopefully we have some, let's say, free space here on the Autobahn without that much traffic um, so that we can see the acceleration. First impression already here in fourth gear is that the punch from the mid RPMs is more than before in the previous generation i30N that we drove. I don't know if that's only a subjective feeling, but let's see. So 4,000, then the turbo really comes, 5,000, 6,000 is still pulling, six and a half, now he wants to shift, and until six and a half, there's a lot of power. Shift again. Yeah, that's pretty cool actually. 
So um, let's see in the acceleration video later on if that is only a subjective feeling, but I have the feeling that the power curve and power delivery is smoother and better um, in this, let's say, 2019 model year than it was in the 2000, I think, 17 model year that we drove before, um, the, 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 the predecessor i30N as the hatchback. Um, therefore, overall, as said already in the beginning, I have the feeling that Hyundai has made a lot of things um, better in detail, actually. They didn't change the whole car. There's no, let's say, huge difference, but the suspension is smoother. The traction of the front axle is better. Um, the engine power delivery is better. The shifting seems to be better because in the earlier version we had some problems with shifting from second to third sometimes or even from first to second and um, therefore a um, very very good job and also considering the price and considering also the exterior design of the car um, this at least in this price range is my let's say car of the year because it is the let's say perfect hot hatch that you can expect for a reasonable amount of money um, which is let's say usable as a daily if you go to comfort mode everything is quiet exhaust is quiet um, and you can drive it very very smoothly and easily but if you put it to race mode it's a totally different animal and uh, a lot beyond what uh, GTI TCR or um, a Golf R for example which um, have a lot higher prices are offering today so that is a, a very very good package and if in addition to the low price also the leasing rates are good I can only imagine that Hyundai keeps selling a lot of cars of those uh, similar to what they've done last year and the year before where yeah, the take rate for the i30N model was was huge at, at, at Hyundai so at least in Germany um, yeah so let's have some more fun with the car uh, within the next days stay tuned for the further uploads and um, I'm looking forward to your personal comments what you think about this car maybe you have the predecessor and even think about going for this fastback version or the facelift let's say minor facelift now um, so let's see